or inside the shop this is the Ford Explorer in a 2001 that I purchased for the 8.8 .8 rear you can see on the code on the door that it's a D4 which means it's a 373 posi it's exactly what I wanted found it on Craigslist bought it from a super nice guy and it's a limited with a V8 which is why it came with the posi it's got 200,000 miles on it it runs pretty good I was able to drive it on the trailer and bring it home it's got all of the major rust, is rust, rust issues and I'll show you more of that in a little while. There's a bunch of trinkets on this that I'm going to try to incorporate into the Mazda. And we'll get more into that later on. Alright folks, we have the differential cover off. It actually looks in really good shape. You can see the clutch packs in there. It's got the S-clip. And I don't know if you can see it back there, but on the pinion it gives the ratio 373. So I'm very happy. It's in good shape. The backlash is minimal. So I should be able to just narrow this and stick it right in with the uh, spring perches in the right location on the Mazda. Hey folks, welcome back. It's another day here at the shop. And today I decided to go for pulling the rear end out. Um, I talked a little bit, or maybe I will talk about in the future, this four post lift and why I chose it. This one happened to come with the optional ladder jacks. If you buy a four post lift I definitely recommend either buying this type or the ones with the jacks that run underneath so you can lift the wheels off the ground and it acts like a regular asymmetrical frame lift when necessary so it keeps your options open on anything you want to work on. Today's goal pull the rear end out if I get uh, far enough along maybe I can even start trimming the brackets off that are unnecessary off the rear end stripping the brake hardware off things like that so here we go pulling our rear end out when you're working all by yourself you have to use whatever tools you got I have an overhead hoist here and uh, it's being my second person and then I got the transmission jack under there holding up that end and once I get it slid out I'll move the transmission jack out here and then I'll position the hoist in the middle and the rear end will be totally supported by the hoist saves a lot of pain and uh, it works well so there we go we got the rear end out it's dangling from the overhead hoist I don't need the transmission jack anymore, so good to go. One other thing I wanted to mention about these 8.8 .8 rears out of the Explorer, I think the reason why no one is interested in the Ranger rear end is those are 28 spline axles. The Explorer is designed to carry about three to 400 pounds more and they went with 31 spline axles in it. So you get more bang for the buck with the Explorer rear. And um, you basically get the heavy duty axles just like uh, the old days between the Ford 8 inch and the 9 inch. So we got the rear end up on the table. I, a long time ago I built this little fixture to hold it down and uh, you can spin the rear end around on the bolts and uh, it's come in handy. I do a fair amount of rear end work. I got an 8 inch Ford Mustang rear here. I got this was the original rear I was doing for the Mazda. It was the eight and a half inch out of the 99 Chevy Silverado. I had a 342 Posi. I've already narrowed the tubes. I've got the axle flanges ready to weld back on, but I just didn't want to spend all the money on the axles and brakes and everything to get it to work. The 8.8 .8 was a much better option for very little money. So um, got a good 342 GM 8.5 Posi if anybody's interested. Hey folks, welcome back. I got the rear end out, obviously. I made quite a mess. I just want to show you a high mileage vehicle and uh, the play in the universal joint. So, totally wiped out. So the other thing is, if you're going to narrow a Ford 8.8, .8, do not do it by exterior dimensions on the housing because you'll get it wrong here we have the driver's side axle and the passenger side axle and I'm measuring it as accurately as I can and hopefully you can see that it's two and seven eighths of an inch and it's pretty well documented on the internet but 
Again, there's the difference in height of the driver's side versus the passenger side. So if we do that two and seven eighths, my rear end measurements are going to come out and be 56 and seven eighths, which is pretty good. So um, remember how I said I wanted to be able to drive the vehicle out? Well, I took the rear end out. Because this is all wheel drive, I can get away with these old antique tow dollies. I bought these out of a scrapyard 25 years ago. These things come in handy. I keep They just sit in the woods when I need it. They're just sitting there ready to pull out. I've moved buildings with these things, boats, you name it. And obviously vehicles without rear ends or front ends. You can see I put the hitch receiver on the front of the front tube for when I move buildings. I can uh, tow it. So anyway, uh, I just uh, to slide the tubes out if it needs to be wider and there's plenty of holes to narrow it up. But this will fit on my car trailer as well. The narrow width that it's at right now fits between the fenders of the car trailer. So in a little bit we'll see that how that works out. Hopefully the leaf springs will sit right down in the buckets and we'll be able to drive the thing out because this particular vehicle is all wheel drive. All right, there we go. I got the I sat in the leaf spring buckets. It's a little sketchy. It's rubbing on the body kit right there a tiny bit. Hopefully it'll just skid. I only got to go across the way there a little bit. Let's see how it goes. There you go, it worked. Alright folks, what I've got here is my three tools that I've been using to clean this rear end up. Obviously I had a lot of surface rust that I'm using the wire wheel to get rid of. I've got the big DeWalt 7 inch grinder to get rid of the heavy welded areas. And then once I get down to the tube, just got the weld down to where I start touching down on the actual tube, I stop and then I use a flapper wheel. I'm trying one of these 60 grit Diablo ones from Home Depot just to see how they perform. I've used uh, Forney that they sell at the local Ace Hardware store or Napa store. I've used SAIT, S-A-I-T, which is an industrial grade abrasive company. But then I usually take this flapper wheel and I go in and I just knock the, the high spots of the weld down and then what I do is I'm able to get a nice shiny area and what you can really do is make it look like there was never a bracket on there. Now I have a couple of a holidays here I got a little too carried away cutting the brackets off with the cutting wheel I'll go in with the TIG welder when I narrow the axle and I will weld those up so just as a tip use the heavy quick removal one the 7 inch grinder to get rid of the the big giant welds the leftovers from how you cut it off whether it was with a plasma cutter or a torch or a grinding wheel and then use the flapper wheel to go in and remove and fine tune the weld take it down so you're just touching the parent material and therefore you're not really removing much axle tube material and when you paint it up it'll look nice and round like there was never a bracket on there. Well folks I just took my respirator off and we got a nice cloud of uh, dust from the rust that's coming off this rear end. I just opened the doors to get some uh, fresh air circulating through and some of this old stuff out. So what I've done while the Rear end is rotated in this direction before I rotate it to work on the rest is I've just cleaned up the entire axle tube. First of all, this is the driver's side where it's going to get narrowed, so I want to make sure that this is in excellent condition. And then when I do the final cut, I'll prep both ends before I weld it back together. 
but I might do a back brace on this with a bridge that goes across the differential cover. Um, I've done it on 9 inch Fords before. It definitely adds a tremendous amount of strength to the rear. I don't know how much power I'll ever be putting to the ground with this rear, but now's the time to do it. I'll have the narrowing fixture in the rear end so once all the welding is done I can make sure that the axle ends are straight with the carrier barons in, inside the rear end. So uh, I'll have a video of that when the time comes to narrow the rear. All the grinding's done. Time to clean the garage. Yeah, spring cleaning's done. Next time on KEI Fabrication. Well, we're up here at the junkyard getting my passenger side axle, and we are going to try and grab it out of that orange colored Ford Explorer today. We'll let you know how I make out. <laughs> <laughs>